What is up, y'all? This is the Eric V stream teacher. And would you believe that audio is more important than video when it comes to live streaming? Because you have an audience that will be listening to you and not watching you because you're live for hours, presumably. So they may be multitasking or they may just have you on another tab. So your stream suddenly turns into a podcast and podcasts. Audio is important. So would you believe that this microphone isn't plugged in at all. That's right. All you're hearing is straight up headset audio microphone with no other things. So what we're going to do is get into how you can get your stream from sounding like this. And this is exactly how the headset sounds out of the box. I did not drop it. I did not break it. It just sounded like this. We're going to make it sound like this to make sure that your audience has a pleasant experience. Class is in session. So right now we're starting from scratch and try not to throw up at the audio or the vortex of video that's coming from my display capture right now. We're using OBS, however, this can be done in Streamlabs the same exact way. Also, you can use this method with any microphone that you use. I use it with my condenser mic that I showed you at the beginning of the video. And I do it with every mic, these specific filters based on my equipment and based on the levels that I'm about to show you. And of course, this is based off of my voice. So some of the settings that I use may need to be tweaked to your specific voice in your environment. Speaking of environment, I do want to mention that I stream from very carpeted areas. I have a felt green screen. I have a carpet. I have a rug. My walls are bumpy. So it's pretty good acoustics naturally. So maybe if you're hearing a lot of echo, you might want to put up some curtains or even some posters or whatever it is that may be causing that hardness sound in your environment. So keep those things in mind as we go through this. But we're going to go into our filters from the microphone. So I'm clicking on the gear in OBS. And again, this works in slobs as well. And we're going to filters. The thing about filters is that the order of the filters matter just like they would with visual filters. And the first thing you want to do is add the noise suppressor. The noise suppressor does what it says it does. It suppresses noise. And I like to use speaks, to be honest, because it's lower CPU usage. I'm using a laptop, so I like to preserve all the CPU that I can. With this next filter I'm about to show you, there's a lot of stream educators, I guess you could say, who say do not use both of these filters. However, in my practice, in my training, in my experience with this particular microphone, I do need both. And there are going to be cases where you might need both. So definitely look at that microphone to see that it goes all the way down after you set your noise suppressor. With this microphone, it does not go all the way down. So if yours doesn't, follow this next step. If yours goes all the way down with no mic activity after the suppressor, you can skip to the next filter. So what that is, is the noise gate. So I'm going to go ahead and add that now. And when I add the noise gate, I'm going to turn it all the way down. Right now I'm projecting a bit because the noise gate always crushes my voice with these default settings. So I need you to really be diligent about how you do this. With Streamlabs, there's no label of the decibels at the bottom showing you how loud your microphone is when it picks up activity. So you might want to do this in OBS and translate those settings into Streamlabs so you can see specifically where you want to be. So I'm going to show you exactly where that is right now. And what I'm going to do after I turn down the open and the close threshold. So essentially right now, the noise gate is off. I'm going to be completely quiet so that I can see where the green levels rise in that microphone. So I can see exactly where to set that open threshold, wherever that microphone is showing activity at that highest point. That's where I'm setting the open threshold. So right now I'm going to be silent so I can see where that is.
all right so it looks like it's touching the 45 so what i'm going to do is set our open to negative 43 just to be safe and because the noise gate is six decibels apart from the close and open threshold i'm going to set this at 49. by the way you always want your close threshold to be lower than your open threshold so now what I'm going to do after I set it to 43 and 49 based on this specific microphone, I'm going to be silent and we're going to see if I can hear or see any activity with the microphone. And as we can see, it is silent. There was a little bit of something peeking through there but I doubt that it was audible at all. And that's what you wanna look for as you tweak your settings. You wanna make sure that there's nothing there when you're not speaking. You wanna make sure that there's no airplanes, for instance, I live near an airport, so if an airplane comes by, you wanna make sure that that thing does nothing. If you have animals barking, if you have people yelling outside of your door or your walls, you wanna make sure that those things don't come through. And that's what the noise gate is for. That's what I use it for. I use the noise suppressor for the static noise that you were hearing. So again, to be very specific, why I use the noise gate and the noise suppressor is because I've listened to streamers who've had noise gates on, but no noise suppressor. And every time they would speak, that static would come through that noise gate because the noise gate opens up the entire microphone when you reach a certain volume. And that noise suppressor makes sure that those do not come through at all. So that noise suppressor was necessary. But if you only use the noise suppressor, you still might hear other environmental noises like tapping on your keyboard, using your controller, airplanes, buses, whatever you might live near. So again, that's why I use both with my specific equipment. Make sure you tweak these to exactly where you need them to be. Do a lot of test recordings. You can also monitor your microphone to hear what it sounds like in live time. And I'll show you how to do that before this video is over. I just had an airplane go by and I bet you didn't hear it. Amazing. By the way, I do not use the attack time the whole time, the release time. I just leave those alone, but you might want to tweak those based on if you feel like the noise gate is too aggressive with your voice. The next up we're gonna use is the compressor. And the compressor, again, does exactly what it says it does. It compresses your sound waves, your voice, into a more compressed package. So if you're mumbling under your breath, it makes that louder. If you're screaming at the top of your lungs, it makes that quieter. So what I'm gonna do is make the ratio of this about four to one, and this makes the compressor not too aggressive to the point where it will distort my voice, but it gives it a more natural, even sound for anybody who's listening. Because as you're speaking for hours on end, your voice is naturally going to fluctuate. Now, as I look at the levels below, I'm looking at where it's going into the yellow. But to me, it's still a little bit low because I'm barely into that yellow on average. So I'm going to up my output gain by about two decibels because I want to touch the red. I'm not going to lie to you. I want to touch the red, but I don't want to invade the red too much. I want to just tap on it every now and then, depending on what I do. So again, like I said, if I mumble below my breath, like right here, I can still be heard. I just got quiet just to see if the noise gate was still working. Anyway, and if I say something like, "woo," that was really loud. But it may have not been really loud to you because the compressor was doing its job. And those are all the filters that I use. Again, want to reiterate, I use those filters in that order. You have them out of order, they will not give you the desired effect. If you want to hear your voice as you are speaking into your microphone, AKA monitor your voice, you would go into advanced audio properties and then you would select your microphone. And then you would say, I don't know, monitor only or monitor an output. It wouldn't matter because you're not streaming. And now I can hear my own voice and it's doubled. So I'm gonna turn it off because that's weird to me.
All right, so you can do that and listen to yourself as you tweak everything, but I would prefer, I would more likely suggest do test recordings, record to death, <laughs> do all the recordings you can. And what you can even do is if you recorded the file, you can drag it back into your sources and listen to your audio as you tweak the audio. And you can use those same exact filters that you use on your microphone on that source that you recorded. And you can also just record your source raw and then you can hit it with all the microphone filters you want to, to see what changes you're making to your voice in real time. And I think that's a super cool thing about OBS and Streamlabs for that matter. This is an example of what I was talking about. So right now I am recording this in post and I have no filters on the microphone again. If you have a keen air or some headphones, you, you can probably, probably tell, tell there is no filters, filters or, or there, there are, are no filters, filters on this microphone. microphone. And what, what I'm gonna, gonna do is add, add the filters to the source once I drag it and drop it back into the sources area. And then when I apply the filters to that, I'm gonna copy the filters that I just made and applied to the source, and then I'm gonna paste it directly onto my microphone. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. This is an example of what I was talking about. So right now I am recording this in post and I have no filters on the microphone again. If you have a keen air or some headphones, you could probably tell there is no filters or there are no filters on this microphone. And what I'm gonna do is add the filters to the source once I drag it and drop it back into the sources area. And then when I apply the filters to that, I'm gonna copy the filters that I just made and applied to the source, and then I'm gonna paste it directly onto my microphone. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. This is an example of what I was talking about. So right now, I am recording this in post, and I have no filters on the microphone again. If you have a keen air or some headphones, you could probably tell there is no filters, or there are no filters on this microphone. And what, what I'm going to do is add the filters to the source once I drag it and drop it back into the sources area. And then when I apply the filters to that, I'm going to copy the filters that I just made and apply. So what I just did was copy the filters that I just made on top of that file of me speaking. And then I pasted it onto my microphone. So now I can hear everything that I just did. That's it. We did it from beginning to end. I had no music in the background just so you could hear how raw and real, too real, this headset's microphone sounded. But now we have it sounding pretty damn good if I do say so myself. So if I helped you out, help me out. Hit me with a like or something, it's free. And if you need any additional help, just ask. Just leave a comment, come to the Twitch streams. You can join my Discord ask a question in the streamer school channel so again that is noise suppressor noise gate and compressor in that order class dismissed let's go i said let's damn bitch. let's go <gasps> what double ko i hit him what This game full of sh